Welcome to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Julia Zamora. And I'm not Lynn Schroeder. I'm Aaron Thompson. <laughs> You're in for a real treat. We have a special guest in the garden this week. David Wilson, the director of marketing for Over the Vest Nurseries. To quote David himself, born and raised in Northern Ireland, the week, the greatest wee place on earth. And he's been growing plants and cultivating gardens since he was a boy. David went to Greenmount College in Northern Ireland and came to the United States by scholarship and was actually a real student of the U.S. nursery industry. David relocated to the United States and enjoyed helping gardeners here discover their many virtues of growing fascinating and gorgeous plants and the pleasures of working the earth. David has been the marketing director for Over the Vest Nurseries in Bristol, New Jersey for over 23 years. You, your two videos have been viewed by over 6 million viewers and, and some of the most educational entertainment, entertainment on the web. So stay tuned and we'll be right back in the garden with David Wilson after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Fertilum's Azalea and Evergreen Food plus Systemic Insecticide 915-3 contains five micronutrients which are designed for azaleas and evergreens to provide the proper nutrients and producing stunning green leaves and essential new growth while protecting the plant from damaging insects for up to eight weeks. Fertilum's Azalea and Evergreen Food contains 9% nitrogen for green growth, building bigger stems and leaves, 15% phosphorus for root growth and increased flower production, 13% potash to promote vigorous growth so plants are better able to resist disease and cold. The micronutrients are the icing on the cake to enhance further growth, strengthen, and beautify color. Tired of seeing your plants prematurely drop their leaves, the flowers disappear? Fertilums Azalea Evergreen Food plus Systemic Insecticide 91513 contains an easy-to-apply insecticide that keeps your azaleas and evergreens looking great all year long. Those hungry insects do not have a chance. Apply in spring before bud sprout and continue throughout the season as indicated on the label growing guide. Fertilums Azalean Evergreen Food plus Systemic Insecticide 91513 with micronutrients is a must for the passionate Azalea and Evergreen grower to help produce that beautiful abundance of color and fantastic fragrance everyone will love. So next time you visit your favorite garden center, pick up Fertilums Azalea and Evergreen Food plus Systemic and expect to have the best looking shrubs in the neighborhood. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 AM WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome, everybody, to Bloomers of the Garden. We are so excited to have David Wilson, the Director of Marketing from Over to Vest Nurseries, here with us today. David, welcome to the garden today. Yes. Thank you. It's good to be here. Yeah, great to have you. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, we're going to put you right on the uh, therapist's couch today, uh, <laughs> David. So uh, first question is, tell us about your childhood, your family, and growing up in Ireland. Well, it's a long story, of course, but I was <laughs> right. very lucky, really. Um, I was born on my parents' farm in a rural part of Ireland. Mm -hmm. And when I went to school, I had uh, teachers who were really quite visionary in that they had a garden at the school. Wow. And then, uh, uh, and I was a, like a boy playing soccer. And to me at that time, <laughs> the garden was a nuisance because that's where the ball went in and went oh, to so retrieve right. the ball out of the rhubarb and the peas and beans <laughs> and so on. But right. then when I went to the secondary school, the same headmaster had moved to that school and he'd got, at that point, a greenhouse and a garden. Wow. And so we were, as part of our studies, working in the garden and learning about plants. Now, at that time, wow. I was the eldest son due to inherit the farm. Right. And the farm in Ireland, they grow wonderful grass, probably the best grassland in, in the world. Okay. And so it's all sheep and cattle. And I could tell you all the finer points of dairy cows and <laughs> beef cattle and sheep <laughs> and so on. But I wasn't interested in animals. No, no animals. Sorry. But I wanted to be outside. Right. And then my grandmother was a really fantastic woman, raised nine of a family wow. on a small farm Ooh, in very difficult economic conditions yeah. uh, between and during two world wars. Yeah. And she was very resourceful and so on. And to her, grandsons were good for weeding. Oh. weeding. <laughs> so I used to go up and help her in the garden. Oh, and one day when I was there, she picked a plant and she picked the flower off this thing and she said, do you know what this is? Uh -huh. I said, I don't know. And she started to pull the flower of what we know today as the bleeding heart or Dicentra mm -hmm. spectabilis. Yeah. Yes. And wow. when she pulled the two pink lobes down out of it, she said, this is called Lady in the Bath. So she pulled the two pink lobes out of it. And to my amazement, this silhouette of a pristine white lady figure popped up out of the middle of the flower. Wow. And I was so excited uh -huh. that I ran down the hill across the fields and up over to my parents' farm to tell my mother <laughs> about this new discovery that I'd made. <laughs> no. wow. And at that point, I knew then that I was interested in plants. Isn't that amazing? So, You're so young. It, and, and at 12, uh -huh. I was the only boy in my class that knew exactly what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Wow. 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 I wish I was like that. Yeah. <laughs> so I, that's why I think my early education was uh -huh. so valuable because it opened my eyes uh -huh. to gardening and to plants and to, you said about the, you know, the psychiatrist couch yeah. or whatever. Yes. To me, it's out in the garden. The it's garden outside. is so therapeutic. Yes. When you think about mm -hmm. people that have, if I've ever any challenging things, things mm -hmm. I have to think about, I'm out there pottering about, footering about, as they say in Ireland in the garden. Right. And I'm thinking, and I'm at perfect ease with the world. So uh -huh. I think when people are so today stressed out, uh -huh. we're doing everything not to 60 and so many seconds in a car. McDonald's will get you in and out in so many seconds. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's all sure. hush and push and push, rush. Push, rush. Sure. And in the garden, it's slow. It's slower. It's, it's, it's just taking your time. Yes. And I think the garden is the place to be. <laughs> oh, it sounds like you, you really enjoy it. It's a passion. Oh, I do. It's a passion. Yes. And, and if you can get something and you grow it mm -hmm. and then you watch it grow yeah. and you smell it if it's a nice smelling plant and then you get to show it off to other people yeah. oh, and yeah. you invite family and friends mm -hmm. and see this sort of thing, that is, I think is so wonderful yeah. and it's what I try to show people that Hopefully, they can see through my eyes mm -hmm. the beauty, the appreciation of these wonderful bounties of nature. Right. That, that I think I've been lucky over the years when I was a kid. I had a lot of people who shared information, who mm -hmm. taught me things, who opened my eyes right. to things. And that's what I've been trying to do over the years is to take people and say, look at this. Look how beautiful that is. Imagine what you could do with this. And that's oh, exciting, wow. I think. And, it is and then when you see the light go off in people's eyes oh, yes. and they get excited about that's it right. and then they grow it uh -huh. and they show it off to other people, the whole thing magnifies. Yeah. yeah. It's so contagious. What, you know, you're just talking about that and saying, you know, being so loving for your plants. Yeah. 
it's contagious. I'm starting to really feel for that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's also a certain level of pride. You know, right? Oh, like, yeah. There's, absolutely. Like, I, before I started working with uh -huh. the show, I definitely, uh, I, I didn't really plant much, right? right. I, I wasn't into, I mean, besides cutting my own lawn, that was it, right? right. But I've gotten to know that the pride factor, yeah. like, I mean, something that I'm growing in my yard. Yeah, you something know, I did. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to show it off, too. I'm that's right. Put it up on my mantle, right? And, oh. that's, uh -huh. and that's very true because yeah. uh -huh. often I've been out in people's company and they mm -hmm. said to me, well, it's easy for you. You've been doing it all your life. That's you know right. how to do this. Uh -huh. yeah. And I said, look, it's not rocket science. No, it's just it's understanding mm -hmm. the basics of nature. It is. And if you do it and give it a little water, a little bit of fertilizer, pull the weeds from around about it, listen to what your local folk at the garden center or Absolutely. master gardener friends right. or whatever, Absolutely. and try it. It may not work, mm -hmm. but at least most of the time you'll enjoy success. And mm -hmm. from that comes mm -hmm. that pride and reward. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I've That's done right. it. Never I've stop, right? And I, I, tell, I, I tell my kids this, That's you right. know, just because you don't succeed the first time, yeah. right? If right. first you don't succeed, dust yourself off and try again as a yeah. song. That's says. right. So yeah. I agree 100%. Yeah, I know. I heard you were selling plants before yeah. uh, you had your driver's license, man. How did, how did you get away with that, man? <laughs> How's your early years, man? How did, how, so, all right. Oh my so, goodness. coming out of the family farm, right? I, I get it. I get it. Right. Like, I, I was a kid once, right? We were both, right. I mean, I, I, I definitely did not like uh, being on the farm. Um, but yeah. I definitely like the colors, you know, that, that my family, you know, we had a farm in South Carolina. Uh -huh. um, they had a rice farm, and then my mom's family had a tobacco farm in North Carolina. Wow. And so both sides of the family come from farming, but um, I just figured, you know, I, I was around cigarettes so much, I never wanted to smoke. <laughs> no I was around, was around <laughs> rice so yeah. much. as didn't want like, rice. I never, <laughs> right. <laughs> so wow. I, I just was wondering, man, how, how, how did you get into the actual selling of the, of the plants and the, into the, the whole well, cultural side of, it, of the market? <laughs> it was economics, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need the money. <laughs> <How> <laughs> <it> works. <laughs> well, that helped. Yeah. But really, I, I've been at school. I was pricking out seedlings. I learned how to make you know, cuttings, grow plants from cuttings. Sure. I was taught how to, you know, make a John in his compost. This is a very British thing. That's right. But I still remember the formulation of seven parts loam, three parts peat and two parts sand to make a compost. And, and I was growing little plants in my garden mm -hmm. at home. It was a farm, so there was plenty of land. Mm -hmm. And the, my family had the greenhouse, which I just took over. And then I put up plastic cloches and so on and, and had a bunch of plants growing in that. Well, then I realized that, hey, I could sell these things and people wanted to buy them. Yeah. But I wasn't old enough to drive my father's car, so illegally I had not passed my driver's license. Now, it's <sighs> rural Ireland. Everybody knows everybody else, and most of the policemen knew my father. Oh. So <laughs> and he, he was, I suppose, trustworthy enough. Yeah. Or I, he felt I was trustworthy enough right. that I took his car on a Saturday, loaded it up with my plants and went to the jail, jail square in my local town and stood there and sold the plants to any poor, unsuspecting homeowner <laughs> that came in contact with me. <laughs> and the amazing thing was that I managed to sell them and I thought I was making a fortune. Wow. I had no overheads. Right. My father yeah. was paying for the gas. Uh -huh. So I was like, <laughs> yeah, this is, man, this is not making money at this carry 100% profit, yeah. right? Yeah, a real salesman it. here, huh? Yeah, that's great margins, man. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, we definitely appreciate that. Yeah, uh, I good. mean, I think it's uh, it's important to uh, always, always, always make sure uh, you're, you're in business, obviously, to make money make at the money, end of the yeah. day, right? Yeah. And, yeah. you know, at those early years, entrepreneurship is, is it's always, important. it's important. Yeah. I always encourage my children. So that's good to hear. David, man, we definitely thank you. We thank you for that. Uh, yeah. We're going to take a break a in the garden. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see you guys in a few. We'll be back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. 
If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Are you looking forward to a spring of vibrancy while using the best organically approved growing media for your annuals and vegetables? Coast of Maine's Sprout Island Organic Seed Starter has been created to set a diverse culture ideal for germinating seeds and root cuttings. Created using the best ancient composting techniques and new age mixing devices, Sprout Island Organic Seed Starter gently combines kelp meal, worm castings, mycorrhizae, perlite, and sustainably harvested peat moss, establishing the most desirable setting to enhance new plant growth. Coast of Maine's Sprout Island Organic Seed Starter is available at these local retailers. Or visit www.coastofmaine.com to locate one near you. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, PA. Ashcombs Farm and Greenhouses, Mechanicsburg, PA. Sickles, Little Silver, New Jersey. Your next houseplant is waiting for you in Bloomer's Home and Garden Center's Greenhouse. Bloomer's recognizes that houseplant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A houseplant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large, revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to zizi plants... Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's Greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com. And we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Horticulture is defined as the science, technology, art, and business of cultivating and using plants to improve human life. Horticulturists and horticultural scientists create global solutions for sustainable, nutritious food and healthy, restorative, and beautiful environments. Look at that. Wow. Right? <laughs> we found that on Green Mount College website. Yes, sir. Isn't that ironic? That's where you went to school. Oh, right. man. What was, was, uh, was your time there transformational in, in your horticultural journey? I'm kind of interested in uh yeah. And your uh, pre- pre-collegiate collegiate experience. Well, um, absolutely. Before that, uh, I was, you know, brought up on an agricultural farm. So I knew very little about horticulture. And I applied to go to Greenmount College. And actually, the Department of Agriculture sent representatives down to see my parents because they thought I'd mm-hmm. filled the form in wrong. <laughs> they thought I put, I put horticulture when it should have been agriculture. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, yeah. So anyway, they were very good in that they said to give David some experience, he should go and work somewhere to learn more about horticulture before he goes to the college. Wow. So I was very lucky in that I got a place at an experimental research station called Doc Gall. And I went there, and during that time when I was there, I was learning about growing soft fruit, things like raspberries and gooseberries and red and black currants and blueberries and things wow. like that, but also orcharding, things like apples and plums yeah. and pears and greenhouse crops and vegetables and, would you believe, also daffodils because wow. Northern Ireland at that time, still is today, uh-huh. uh, one of the foref- forefront places of producing daffodil breeding Daffodil Brian's. Wow. A man called Guy Wilson and and today Brian Duncan 
and there's a lady called Kat, Kate Reed breed some of the best daffodil varieties in the world. Wow. So they were doing experimental work on that. Anyway, long story short, by the time I went to Greenmount, mm-hmm. I was already equipped with a lot of experience, Good. and that was a, a tremendous thing. And I then was lucky to be there with, uh, you know, lecturers and and to learn. And I was so thirsty for information. Mm. So I went there and and was lucky enough to pass out at distinction level, became uh, the top student of the whole college and won a Best best Plantsman Award and and a a bunch of stuff. And then the next thing was to move from there to a college in England mm-hmm. uh, because that was basically as far as I could go in, in Ireland. So I went then to Somerset College of Agriculture in the west southwest country where they make cider and are oh, oh. my love and they speak <laughs> with a, you know accent. Yeah. And there I was lucky enough to study under a man called Roy Cheek wow. who Roy was a trem- like a walking encyclopedia with plants. <laughs> so I learned a lot. Wow. I mean I'm 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 painfully and fiscally aware of how much emphasis the Brits, you know, they put on gardening versus horticulture and and uh, as you know, as compared to we do um, in the U.S., did that surprise you? Like uh, going, making a transition from, uh, you know, leaving uh, Greenmount and coming over to Britain in England, and well, yeah, um, there was a lot more to learn. Okay, and and also what's really tremendous, and this stood me in good stead. And at that time, I was just taken for granted that sure. because Ireland and the southwest part of England is warm by the Gulf Stream. In those areas, you can grow more plants from all over the world than any other place in the world. Mm. So we are, and I'm learning about all of these plants, and quite literally in the gardens there, you can grow plants from New Zealand, things like hebes and formiums. Wow. wow. And okay. and uh, those, and from Australia, eucalyptus and so on. Wow. You can move over then and grow some of things like monkey puzzles or a carrier right. from the About tip yeah. the wow. tip of South America and eucryphias and embothriums and all those things. Take the giant rhubarb from places mm-hmm. like Brazil, Gunnera, mm-hmm. and then take that stuff and then take things like dioramas, the angel's fishing rod, nephophias, red-hot pokers, wow. and right. those little uh, uh, delispermums from up in the mountains in South Africa mm-hmm. and grow them all together mm-hmm. with plants that grow in the Himalayan valleys in Nepal and Bhutan, China mm-hmm. and Japan, of course, and the mountainous areas like the Pyrenees and the Alps. Right. Grow them all cheek by jowl in a garden in that part of thing. So you might wow. have a small garden and have all the flora from all over the world growing beside each other. Right there. And there I was learning about these things. Wow. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. That's, that's unheard of. It, it's, it's amazing. So I'm trying to learn about all these things right. and walking and talking and at a, on a night sitting around talking to the old guys. <laughs> you know, we're sitting there and I'm listening to the uh-huh. stories. Right. And I'm hearing about the plant hunters and the nurserymen and the characters like Harry Wheatcroft, uh-huh. who was a rose grower, real showman. Yeah. And he had Dundiri whiskers and stuff uh-huh. and walked into the Chelsea Flower Show in a pink suit. In a pink suit. In a rented <laughs> Rolls Royce. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's imagine? flamboyant. Oh, oh my gosh. And and, and I'm learning about all these characters uh-huh. yeah, and, and, yeah. and listening to the stories oh, fascinating. and learning about plants. Oh, wow. And that, the more I learned uh-huh. or the more I heard, the more I got they interested. Got excited. Yeah. And the old thing in life, uh-huh. the more you know, the more oh, you realize wow. just how little you really know. Yeah, absolutely. That's and right. so that was all stuff that happened after, you know, and during the college and then in my formative years and, and starting to work. Wow. That's a great That's note a great on philosophy thing. right there, it right? Is, yeah, oh, my right? gosh. Man, we got to pay some bills, guys. Yes, we do. So we're going to be right <laughs> back with David Wilson from uh, Director of uh, Marketing of Overdivest Nurseries in a few minutes. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609 685 one eight eight zero. That's six zero nine six eight five one eight 
1-800-273-8080. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Do you think you have insects eating away your nice, beautiful lawn? Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below is the product for you. Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below not only controls chinch bugs, which is a surface-feeding insect, but also controls grubs, which is a subsurface-feeding insect. It does it all, guaranteed. When most homeowners see their lawn turning brown in the summer, they think grubs. Damage from the larva, Japanese beetle. But in many cases, it could be chinch bugs. Chinch bugs are hard to see because they are so small and you'd need to get down on your hands and knees to see them. If you misdiagnose your problem, Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below has you covered. The product will control both chinch bugs and grubs. This summer, control your pest problems with Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below. It also may be used in flower beds, on landscape ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below will also control crane fly larvae, ants, mole crickets, sod webworms, bill bugs, and many more. Your property will be pest free with Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below. So, next time you're visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below and expect to have the best looking lawn and landscape in the neighborhood. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds. We carry a flock of feeders like the Brome Squirrel Proof Feeder, which has a lifetime guarantee. Brome makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Coles, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomer's Blend. Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. It's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomer's Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomer's in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 AM WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Today, our special guest is David Wilson, the Director of Marketing for Over the Vest Nurseries. Over the Vest is one of the finest nurseries in all of the USA, and it's a great source of pride mm-hmm. to have them he, right around the corner from us. Right. In, right in our backyard. Christian, New Jersey, by right the way. In our backyard. Yeah, yeah, that's right. For sure. Isn't that great? Sure. Now, uh, David, uh, you were in, in uh, England, correct? And last time we w- were talking. And how did you get to the U.S., by the way? Well, it's a long story. But basically, I was, yes, working in a parks department mm-hmm. in southern England, hmm. bored to tears. <laughs> it was like 8 o'clock in the morning, finished at 4.30. Oh, my you know. God. Keep your mouth shut and your nose clean, and <laughs> you retire. When yeah. You think. But that was there was too much bureaucracy. <laughs> too much. Yeah. Yeah. So I yeah. actually got a phone call one day from a man who turned out to be the Duke of Abercorn. Hmm. We've got oh. a job in Ireland. Are you interested? I didn't know, but um, he had seen when I passed, graduated out of Greenmount College. They wrote about me in the local papers and so on, and oh. he'd remembered that. So back I went as an assistant manager, then became the manager, and eventually became, after 17 years, the partner at at Barons Court Nurseries on the upper beautiful 350, I don't know, three and a half thousand acres. Wow. Beautiful 
thing with a wonderful, uh -huh. very nice plant collection there hmm. too. Anyway, I was building the nursery. We had a commercial nursery who had a retail garden center, a landscape division. Mm -hmm. And to promote it, I started doing things like this, radio programs. And oh, then yeah. I started doing television programs and so on. Nice. And then one day I got a phone call from an agent in London who was in a predicament. They needed a leader, uh, uh, an expert, to lead a garden tour for the, Royal Hor for the American Horticultural Society. Oh, okay. So then I was asked at short notice to go and lead this tour. So I led a tour down the Iberian Peninsula from Portugal and Spain, yeah. across the Straits of Gibraltar and into the Mediterranean, stopping off in wow. southern France and eventually winding up in Venice. Beautiful trip. Uh, oh, yeah. Beautiful trip. Beautiful, yeah. But I, I had not been to these places before. Mm, and gotcha. I met the first group of people in the Estufa Fria in Lisbon, the Botanic Gardens in Lisbon, mm -hmm. and they're all there keen as mustard with notepads and pencils wanting to know the names of plants and oh. all that sort of thing. Yeah. And David has to try and guide them through. And lucky, <laughs> lucky, lucky enough, I knew enough about the plants oh, to be able God. to, you know, lead the tour. And then that led to eight years of... Wow. Uh, uh -huh. working for them when they had European trips. Uh, right. And so I got to see some of the best gardens in Europe. Oh, is that and, so? wow. Oh, just and met uh -huh. and again met and learned from some of the best gardeners yeah, sure. in Europe. Oh, uh, exactly. I, re I remember going to places like Prince Wolkonski's garden in Cardolo in uh -huh. Brittany and uh, Princess Duza's garden at La Vastival. Wow. And Villandry, the tremendous garden in the Loire Valley yeah. that uh -huh. was partly responsible from a lady from Lebanon, PA, Caroline Coleman, yeah. wow. whose father was the first millionaire in the U.S., uh -huh. and she married a Spanish doctor called Jochen Carvalho, and they found an old... Uh, uh, an old castle, really, sure. uh -huh. that that uh, uh, that was uh, at one stage owned by Napoleon's brother. Wow! And wow. it was in, okay. in 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 disrepair, and they sat to and made this fabulous garden. And today, it's one of the best gardens in the world. Villandry, mm -hmm. if you ever go to France, absolutely. Mm -hmm. worth. And then I went to Monet's garden and places like oh, that. Oh yeah! Wow. Anyway, I was doing stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you? Oh, and yeah. uh, meanwhile, I won a scholarship from a prestigious scholarship that's known as the Nuffield Scholarship, mm -hmm. and that allowed me to come here to study production and marketing in North America. I so see. I knew a bit about uh, horticulture here, mm -hmm. but then when I had uh, had the opportunity to visit at that time the best nurseries in North America. So wow. I went, started off in Canada, mm -hmm. uh, Sheridan Nurseries in Ontario, came here to the Philadelphia area uh -huh. and, and stayed with Dick Hutton at, and his wife at the, that time, the Connard Pyle Nursery. Wow. And then wow. went over to the West Coast and worked my way up through there and right up through into Oregon and mm -hmm. eventually back into British Columbia and went to places like the Bouchard Garden, and uh -huh. all the time I'm learning, taking pictures, and, right. and so on. Uh, and wow, I can't keep up. <laughs> <laughs> well, now yeah. I'm fast forwarding 30, <laughs> so 40 years, right. so it's all okay. kind of condensed in <laughs> right. that thing. But yeah, uh -huh. that was that was kind of thing, and right. yeah. and all the time I'm learning. For sure, for sure. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. And 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 then. Uh, I remember, I'll tell you one more story. Mm -hmm. I went to the Trompenburg Arboretum in okay. Rotterdam. All right. oh, wow. Now, it, there's a tremendous, at that time, mm -hmm. very knowledgeable man on trees and shrubs uh, called Dick Van Hoey Smit. And mm -hmm. I right. got a letter of introduction. And so I went there dressed up with because I didn't know who I was meeting, really. So I had a jacket, a shirt and tie and trousers yeah. and, you know, best foot sure. forward kind of stuff uh -huh. and went forward with my letter of introduction. And he was standing there in a pair of shorts, tennis shoes and a, a T-shirt. <laughs> and he, he very graciously uh -huh. uh, took me around, showed me all day, showed me all the plants that he had in the garden, trees and things. So I learned a good deal from him. 
at about three or four o'clock in the afternoon, we came back, we sat down at a table and we're drinking tea there. Wow. And he said, now, young man, he said, you'll work for your education. <laughs> <laughs> and he promptly got up from the seat oh, and yeah. jumped into the canal and was pulling out duckweed out of the canal. No. Oh, wow. And I, wow. I'm standing there thinking, I got shirt. Jump right in. And right? I have to go back uh, on the train. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, oh, but I want goodness. to repay him for the work, for sure. all the education I got. Sure. So I never <laughs> did jump into the <laughs> canal. <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> but he, at that time, yeah, I think he was the president of the International Dendrological Society uh-huh. and he took wow. me around and showed me some of the very very first plants that are now in commerce that right. that had begun in that How wonderful that? arboretum in the middle of the city. Wow. Amazing place Amazing. because you can see when you look through the tops of the trees, you can see high-rise buildings, but mm-hmm. there you are in the middle of the city and you feel like you're out in the countryside. Wow. wow. Is that something yeah. that Aaron? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Amazing. <clears throat> now, uh, I just want to get back to uh, a little bit about Over to Vest. In, in, 2000, in 2012 now, over the vest achieved Veriflora certification mm-hmm. that recognizes the, its commitment to the environment, its employees, and the community. Uh, it seems like this is something that you, you uh, over the vest strives to really uh, come about in in uh, in, uh, in their business. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh? Sure. Yeah. Well, we've. Uh I think it's 275, 280 acres. Wow. And we grow plants there and we ship them all over the mid-Atlantic and northeastern states to garden centers. Mm -hmm. And uh, we try to grow plants to the highest possible quality. Mm -hmm. And as part of that, we also go out of our way to respect the environment. Now, it's a state-of-the-art operation. Right. Um, and part of that is that we're very careful about what we do and make sure that, you know, we do it with total respect for the environment. Mm. I say when I'm doing YouTube videos, enjoy your gardening, and it's good for us and it's good for the environment, and gardening mm. is. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and so on. But we take that in the nursery situation and we make sure that we you know, do that. And as part of that, that organization you're talking about Mm -hmm. called Vera Flora, uh, I think we were the first commercial nursery to pass their certification, which meant that they go through and look very closely at what we do and how we do it. And also they interviewed our staff Mm -hmm. to make sure that, you know, we're not as the kind of experts in the nursery sure. so telling them stuff, but what are the people on the ground and how does it affect their lives right. and the surrounding area? Yeah. So that's uh, something that was a very visionary thing that, uh, you know, the president and vice president of our organization started mm-hmm. out to do. And we now, just as a matter of fact, really make sure that we, you know, try to do everything within the nursery with a sustainability mm-hmm. angle to Absolutely. make sure right. that... Our plants are not only just the best quality we can do, but they're growing in a respectful way for the environment mm-hmm. too. Yep. That's a great standard to have, you know, that, uh, that yeah. you can, that yeah. you can uh, achieve that. Well, uh, and, that, the mark. Yeah. and that was from day one, yeah. long day before one. long before people were talking about respecting this. the environment and stuff. Right. Ed over the vest was doing it on the nursery Amazing. when it was just right. a small nursery. Mm-hmm. I mean, from the beginning. I from mean, the it, beginning. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They have a state-of-the-art irrigation system that, really? that recycles the water. Like, it, I mean, yeah. like how they treat the environment mm-hmm. around them is just as important as it how is. they grow the plants. Plants with love that's, and a, that's a great and vision, you know, to have that. Absolutely. You know, well, from, from it's, the it's very important, mm-hmm. and it's important that we do that every sure. day as gardeners too. Yes, yep. you know Absolutely. that you just watch what mm-hmm. you're doing and how you're doing it, mm-hmm. and um, and it's, it's good stewardship, isn't it? It is. Well, that's what we are. We're stewards of the land. Yes, yeah. we are, and we're nerd. passing on. You know, they say that you plant a tree for the next generation. Mm-hmm. Well, that's true. And that, yes. yeah, you plant it now, and if you live long enough, you might see it reach maturity. Sure. But the chances are, if you're planting an oak tree or something, that, that it's really the next generation, next generation is going to see that as a mature tree. Yeah, that's yeah. beautiful, isn't it? And and then, uh, incidentally, I know we're going offline here mm-hmm. a little bit, but if you've got a, a, a memorial thing that you're celebrating at home, right. you know, go out and plant it for a wedding anniversary, for a birthday, 
for, uh, you know, for a child born or whatever. I remember years ago when I lived in Ireland going visiting a family and they invited me there and there were three children. Uh-huh. And each one ran up to a tree and said, David, this is my tree. That's Boy. my tree. That's the right thing. And the trees in the garden were different uh, sizes. Right. And so the eldest child had the biggest tree, obviously. But th- I thought that was really good. Beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Oh, David, I tell you what, it's, it's, it's amazing what you're saying to that. Phenomenal. Yeah, it is. Uh, on that note, we're going to uh, take a little break here yep. and come back with uh, David, and uh, we'll be right back in the garden. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with the number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Hollytone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural, long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Over the Vest is exclusively available at independent local garden centers. They help bloomers distinguish ourselves from the plants at the box stores. You know, we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about those guys. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but in my experience, independent garden center, center plants are always better than those box stores. Oh, yes, they are. I mean, I, just in a in a sense where I go into these places. Uh, especially bloomers now um, for advice um, primarily on the caring and things of that nature and the level of care and just the overall knowledge that comes out of it. And I, and I think having brands, you know, having uh, plants and things like that centered around um, that, the what we were just speaking about in the very last segment, growing with pride. And, mm-hmm. um, and, you know, I, I honestly think um, that those make, uh, make wonderful, wonderful additions to having in your stock, you know, as a, as a owner, as somebody who goes in and looking to get plants from bloomers on a regular basis, um, seeing names like over the vest is very, very, very satisfying. You know what I mean? And I I definitely think, um, it's worth it. You know, it's worth the background that you guys have. So tell me a little bit about, you know, um, what led to, I I would say the, the formation, I, I keep hearing about this thing called the garden splendor program. Um, help me, help me, uh, walk me through some of that stuff that, uh, you guys well, took in terms of a level of branding to kind of get us and help well, us. A, a brand is important because it gives you an identification. You can see then what it is. It's, it's something that when you look at a plant or look at a bar of chocolate or whatever it might be, sure. that it's, it, it, it has that promise, that consistency that comes from this brand. I got this plant. It was good. And the other ones should be about the same. But going back to the garden centers for a moment, mm-hmm. you're absolutely right. I always say that they're a tremendous resource for local people. Many of them have been in that area for generations. They know the area. They know the weather. They know what does well. They know what doesn't do well. 
And so there's a lot of good stuff that you can think. And I say, you know, if you're there and, you know, local garden centers know the stuff Mm. and they are going to guide you because they're part of the community. And when you're there working with them, if you're trying to ask questions or get guidance, whatever, just remember that, you know, if you're looking at two or three o'clock on a busy Saturday afternoon and the place is like full of people and the registers are lined up and so on, they're they're, they're just like the rest of us. They get stressed out at times. <laughs> sure. So what I say is try to get in early in the morning or off season yeah. and go regularly and just walk around, take a look. And see, because if they have it in the garden centre, the chances are that it's going to be a good performing variety for your local area. Mm. So there's lots of good stuff to be got there. But yes, at, at Overly Vest, we try to develop brands. People uh, have something then that you can latch on to, something that you can see. Yeah, we got big, long, complicated Latin names. It's an international <laughs> language. It's right. very precise. It's daunting at times. Sure. It is. And I'm stuttering sometimes sure. trying to pronounce them the wrong, uh, <laughs> sure. particularly as a Brit. <laughs> right. we, yeah. we pronounce things differently. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Right. So I'm trying to remember <laughs> how it's pronounced in the U.S. <laughs> but but if you can recognize that it has a simple brand name on there, mm-hmm. Then you can see, yeah, these were the ones that worked out well, mm-hmm. and those are the ones that my sister, my uncle, my mm-hmm. whoever has, and they say these are good. So it gives me something to recognize. Okay. Okay. And that's the importance of branding mm-hmm. with that. And we do a lot of brands. We do the national brands. We do regional brands like Garden Splendor. Mm-hmm. We're also part of a group that does a handpick for you brand. Right. And also what's interesting now is emerging to be really very popular is what's known as worry-free plants. Mm. And these are plants that you can go in and get them and know that they're things that you don't have to be concerned about. And particularly nowadays, people are concerned quite rightly about invasive species. Sure. And so what we've been doing is picking out and finding with the help of scientists Mm -hmm. using the benefits of modern day techniques of breeding to bring plants that are not invasive in the landscape. Mm -hmm. For instance, you know, Berberus lumbergi is a thing that's now banned in a lot of states, quite Mm -hmm. rightly. Years ago, they used to breed and, and developed berberuses from Japan mm-hmm. that, that were planted alongside roads and so on, and they raised them from seed. Mm-hmm. So they naturally selected clones that were good seeders. Well, wow. guess what? When they're planted out in the landscape, they're going to do exactly that. Same. They're going to seed all <laughs> seed over all the place over. <laughs> and so on. And Reproduce. now, with the help of the likes of uh, Dr. Mark Brand at University of Connecticut, who vision, talking about visionary, 25, 30 years ago, realized that this was going to be a problem. So he set out to find, first of all, the varieties that were the most Mm -hmm. worst uh, reseeders. Mm -hmm. And then he started to develop ones that were sterile. And now we've got, as part of the worry-free line, Mm -hmm. there are varieties that Mm -hmm. you can plant that are approved and you can plant in the landscape and not have to worry about them seeding into the landscape. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, wow. And so there's a lot of work going on like that. There's also mm-hmm. miscanthus, which is a big issue in this area. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, with uh, Dr. Wayne um, in, at the University of Georgia mm-hmm. has started to develop, oh, it's not started, he has developed oh, yes. varieties that are sterile or very low mm-hmm. seed count, and you don't need to worry about them seeding into the landscape. Mm-hmm. It's the name of that comes to mind is band width and another one called mm-hmm. Scout that looks like Gracilimus to all intents and purposes. They look exactly the same plant, but the difference is that this doesn't seed into the landscape. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was Dr. Wayne Hanna I was thinking mm-hmm. about. And then there's penicetums. And one of the interesting things about these, fountain grasses is the common name of them. Interesting thing about this, same man, Dr. Wayne Hanna developed these. And they have, they're not going to seed into the landscape. There's a little black seeded one called Maudry, which is terrible. 
You have that in the garden, and seeds come up all like mustard and grass all over yeah. it, seeding into the landscape. And what he did is he developed varieties from a very commonly grown one called Hamelin. He then developed ones that are sterile, very low seed count on them. And the interesting thing, we grow four of them, and one's called Hush Puppy, another one's called um, Cayenne. And uh, the interesting thing is when we tested them in our trial areas in the garden, not only did they not seed into the landscape, but the seed heads last longer. Right, right. So they give a display at least two weeks longer mm. than the wow. variety that it was bred from. Mm -hmm. So not only are we having benefits in the landscape, mm -hmm. but as a display thing, they actually are better in the garden. Amazing, isn't it? It, it is. You know, it's, you're, you're, we're talking about vision, and not only that, but, you know, uh, David, you know, us out here who, who don't know as much as, you know, you're the expert on this a, area, you know, we, we, uh, we don't look at as, at the performance of, of a plant. We look at the beauty, you know, we're looking at the mm. flowers. We, we look at it in a different way that, you know, uh, those experts out there, scientists are looking at it. Yeah, and that's, and that's part of my responsibility at Over the Best. Right. I'm what I call the, the kind of lead trial person. Now, it's mm -hmm. all these years of a lifetime of learning and growing with plants. And we now get from all over the world plant breeders sending us new plants to trial. Most of them are no good. <laughs> Most of them are no good, honestly. They're not. We try them, we look at them and uh -huh. say, ah, you know, some of them are okay, uh -huh. but they're not much different from a variety that's an old tried and true variety that's been that? out there for years. But then, uh -huh. every now and then, in the middle of them, there's something that is outstanding, oh, okay. something that is very special. Mm. And that's what we try to do is to find, find those gems, special. make them available, and put them out through our garden centers, mm -hmm. and then have those so that you can try them. And very importantly, because we're part of a group called Synergy where there's five nursery growers. Now, the interesting right. thing about this, mm -hmm. one's up in Canada, one's right. in Ohio, Virginia, and up in New England and ourselves at Overly Best. We're right. competitors. Yeah. Right. We're out there in the marketplace competing right. with each other, selling right. to the likes of Bloomers and other garden. Sure. Ashcombs was one I heard mentioned yeah. there. Uh -huh. And Sickles and mm -hmm. up in yeah. Little Silver. Yep. We're yep. out there competing, competing with these other other. guys, but we're also uh -huh. sharing information about plants. Wow. Is that something? And that with, with these new varieties. Mm -hmm. So we're very quickly able to get a handle on the potential of that and right. hardiness, reliability, and the potential yeah. performance and 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 how good it's going to do in people's gardens. In your garden. right. And so having that wide geographic area, mm -hmm. and most importantly of all, having all of the experts from mm -hmm. each of those firms. It's not just David Wilson mm -hmm. or right. Ed Overly Vest right. at Overly Vest. These guys have been in, in the it. industry and uh, know as much about plants and sometimes more than the likes sure. of us. <laughs> and we're pooling that information. Wow. So that means going forward, very excitingly it now, is. we've got new plants that are absolutely outstanding. Wow. Folks, listen to all this. All the brains are, are behind all the plants. It, it's, yeah. a, it's, it's, a, it's just a, a cooperative event. Have you got time for me to tell you about a few? Uh, I wish ones? we had another hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to take a break at this yeah. moment, guy. Listen, man, this is a, it's a, a very, very uh, important thing to support your local garden centers. It is. And yeah. I, I think that's 100%. We're going to take a break after this. Uh, we'll be right back in the garden. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. 
Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor blend organic potting soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other composts, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor organic potting soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Barlow's Seagirt, New Jersey. Espen Shades Garden Centers and Greenhouse, Monton, Pennsylvania. Ashcombs Farm and Greenhouse, Mechanicsburg, PA. Wanting to up your game in the vegetable garden? With 90 years of organic gardening experience, the Espoma Company has you covered. Espoma Organic Garden Tone is not your average garden variety fertilizer. Garden Tone is especially blended for organic vegetable gardens. Its all-natural formula contains Biotone, a blend of organic ingredients that supplies essential nutrients for strong, healthy plants and mouth-watering vegetables. Its slow-release formula provides continuous feeding. The Biotone contained in Garden Tone is a combination of organic ingredients and beneficial microbes to help roots grow deeper and faster for bigger, more bountiful harvests. Garden Tone is simple to use and safe for people, pets, and the planet. No harmful chemicals or synthetic fertilizers are ever added. You can find Garden Tone at fine garden centers. Visit Espoma.com to find a retailer near you. Garden Tone from Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. I was going to say it. Me and Julio. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Boy, what, a, what a time today, huh, Aaron? Absolutely. I'm Phenomenal. Telling you, yep, it's been a privilege uh, to, to have David Wilson here with us today, folks. Uh, yeah. You, we, we need to bring him back. Yeah, and, and, I can, I can you go think, for, Aaron? I, I mean, it's story time in the garden, man. Yes, I, would love, it is. <laughs> I, I would love to do that again. So uh, thank you, David, for coming. You're we, welcome. We greatly appreciate it. And for you're sure. just a... Uh, Incredible, a wealth of knowledge. A wealth of it knowledge. Is. Yeah, yeah absolutely. We're yeah. glad to have you on the garden. Yep. Absolutely. So, uh, so listen, folks. Uh, you can always get us at the bloomers dot com and and uh, hit our uh, radio tab, and make sure that you uh, see us on YouTube also. Yep. Right, Aaron. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. At Bloomers Home Garden, follow yes. us, subscribe. Don't forget to text and call the hotline. Mm-hmm. Leave us your question, and we'll call you back. 609-685-1880. That's right. So we'll see you in the garden. See you in the garden. Bye.